This is the tiny studio of David Vorhaus, again both inventor and composer. Working at his best in the early hours of the morning, Vorhaus is developing his own approach to music. Well, this invention, I call the Maniac. It's an analog sequencer, that's what the A stands for. The advantage of analog sequences is that you can actually play the instrument while it's happening and see the music happening in front of you. This way it helps you compose the music because as you experiment, you come up with new ideas, often better than the original. You can take notes out, put other notes in, or bring in whole new sequences. Maniac's multiphasic means you can split it into one, two, three, or four different sequences, and they all play their riffs in counterpoint with each other. You can change the note lengths this way, or in this respect, and you can also change the pitches because. Maniac is automatically tuned digitally, chromatophonic. It's also polyphonic, but unfortunately there's no P in Maniac. If you want to change key, any or all of the sequences will change key at the same time, and you get the slower keyboard. If you just want to improvise with the skip switches, or change the note lengths, but you want a sequence to keep to some particular bar length, and you don't want to keep score, Switch in the Time Warp Navigator. Does it all for you. You can turn sequences upside down. Or back to front. Or you can get them to harmonize, add, subtract from each other. Streams of pulses that you can play with. Well, synthesizers have problems in that you start out with very square waves in both senses of the word. They're not nearly as interesting as, as an acoustic sound, which is always changing. Even if you hear a piano just play middle C, you look at it on an oscilloscope, there are amazing patterns happening. Whereas a synthesizer turns it out square and all the same. And it's, it's a dead sound, so you have to do an awful lot. Um, delay lines, flanges, phasers, um, mark space ratio controllers, and all sorts of things to brighten the sound up and make it interesting. It's funny how uh, our ears have become accustomed to the 12 or so different sounds of the orchestra, which through centuries of history, they filtered down to very, very fine sounds. And here we can make an infinite number of sounds. But sadly, all but the 12 uh, sound, not all but the 12, an awful lot of them just sound plain, boring electronic. And you really have to work on a sound to get it good. <laughs> Vorhaus calls his musical drain pipe, with its strings of electrically conductive tape, the Kaleidophon. Instead of using remote control devices, the Kaleidophon is sensitive to touch. The harder you press the strings, the louder and brighter the sound. It gives the direct response of traditional instruments. When you slide your fingers up and down, the notes don't blur into a whine, but come up clear and distinct. It makes it easier to play fast runs in tune. There are switches which give rapid repeated notes, otherwise very difficult to play by hand. The fact is, music does develop. 
its uh, was done so, otherwise it would still sound like Palestrina and Monteverdi's music. Um, this this change, this development, also doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, the the changes in society affect the changes in music very directly. And let's face it, for better or for worse, the fastest happening change now is technology, electronics. And it's just inevitable that this is going to get into the music of today and of tomorrow. Let's hope and try and make it for the better. Vorhaus switched on his Maniac sequencer to provide the backing for a live performance on his other invention, the Kaleidophon. <laughs> a tiny sample of the sounds technology now offers the musician. Are we witnessing technological self-indulgence? Or is music going through an exciting period of development? I find it reassuring to remember that this development never stops. Be it spinet, serpent, sousaphone or synthesizer, there has always been a new sound of music. However bizarre some of it may sound today, we're perhaps privileged to be witnessing this development at a time when technology is presenting a range of possibilities wider than ever before. It took some respected composers 30 years to accept the pianoforte as a serious instrument. Judged on that time scale, this revolution has hardly begun.